Central Frank 25. Oh, you might want to have somebody take a look. It's different. I've never seen anything like it. It's like, it's like this is a US and it's I don't know. It's strange. Bright lights moving in unusual ways that you wouldn't expect of either a plane or a helicopter. Like a hockey puck shape of a light out there, and it just kept going back and forth everywhere. Oh were, my God, what is this? They were going together and coming apart. Yeah, yeah. They're, well, it's, it's, there's three, and they're, they're lengthwise. Now I'm getting three of them. These are huge returns. I've never seen anything like this. March 8, 1994, hundreds of people claimed to witness otherworldly lights in the sky over West Michigan. I was talking to my friend on the telephone. We had corded phones back then. And when, as soon as I started talking with her, I was looking actually at my kitchen window. And I saw these huge lights on the backyard. And first I thought it was a huge moon, you know, full moon. But there was four of them. And my friend, I said, Edna, I think there's UFOs in the backyard. <laughs> Cindy Pravda watched the unusual lights for about 30 minutes from her home in Grand Haven. I never got off the phone. I would walk from the kitchen window to the, out, the walkout here. My husband was in the basement, but I didn't want to stop looking at him. You know, I knew if I ran downstairs, there was a chance that they'd be gone. That night, Ottawa County Dispatch received dozens of calls all about the strange lights in the sky. Gary Wilkes remembers that night very well. He was working 911 dispatch when the first calls came in. We started receiving a tremendous amount of phone calls about uh, what they considered UFOs in the Holland, uh, Holland area. The Chicago Tribune reported there were more than 300 witnesses who saw the lights across 42 counties as far north as the Upper Peninsula. Dispatch eventually sent a Holland police officer to the area where one of the sightings took place to check things out for themselves. This is the Holland neighborhood where Officer Veldhaus was first called to to investigate reports of strange objects in the sky. In his police report, Veldhaus says when he arrived on this street, he met a man who had already reported seeing two or three UFOs. He then looked through the man's binoculars for himself and saw the objects. He described them as having red, white, and green lights, but he couldn't determine what shape they were. The officer asked dispatch to call the National Weather Service in Muskegon to have the operator check for unidentified objects on the radar. Jack Bouchong, a now-retired National Weather Service meteorologist, was the operator that was working in Muskegon that night in 1994. I was called by the Ottawa County Sheriff's Department, and, and they asked me to um, take a look at radar. Oh were, my God, what is that? They were going together and coming apart. Yeah, yeah they're, well, it's, it's, there's three, and they're, they're lengthwise. Now I'm getting three of them. These are huge returns. I've never seen anything like this. Not even when I'm doing storms. Or, um, these aren't storms. I went ahead and took a look down there, and I did spot uh, one thing moving at about 100 miles per hour, not very fast, uh, and it was over, uh, I, would, I would say it was about right over the, uh, um, right over Holland City, and it was moving towards the west, uh, southwest, out over Lake Michigan, and uh, it, it eventually reached uh, somewhere down South Haven, uh, that's about when it started acting kind of crazy. It was uh, it, it stopped and hovered for a while, and then it would uh, dart out about 20 miles over uh, Lake Michigan, and then uh, within a, just instantaneously or within a few seconds, and I would I would have to find it again. Cindy recalls the same movements that Jack described seeing on his radar: the lights moving erratically and quickly darting away. They were in a stationary. In a straight line, and one would go to the east, and I would think that they were flying over the highway. It was going very slow. Then it would come back to the same order, and I just watched it for the longest time, and then the one on this side just went. It just flew away, like in a blink of an eye. These same movements were also described by Don and Michael Huey, who witnessed the lights for themselves from their Holland area apartment balcony. Like a hockey puck shape of a light out there, and it just kept going back and forth everywhere. 
and then it just like disappeared and went down under the trees and everything like that. And it was there one second, and as soon as it left, it took off and yeah, I mean, it, was like, gone. it was gone like a few seconds. While hundreds of people in Michigan were watching the lights and dozens more calling authorities to report them, Jack was glued on his radar screen trying to figure out what was going on. And there was uh, there was about uh, three or four that uh, that kept following it, and every time that uh, that initial one that I saw moved, uh, the uh, the other um, the other two or three would uh, form a triangle. Now there was a fourth one in there, but it was sometimes I could see it, sometimes I couldn't. But the uh, the main one, and then there were two other ones that seemed to always want to be in a triangle with it, and they were about twenty miles apart from each other. And um, and so I, I uh, once it got over uh, water and the police officers on the ground couldn't see the uh, the aircraft anymore. Um, they uh, they cut off the phone. But I but I um, uh, but I was able to continue watching it for another two hours. And I watched it move uh, down the stem of Lake Michigan um, all the way about just directly uh, west of of uh, South Haven and moved down towards Chicago. And then it stopped uh, about uh, just directly uh, west of Benton Harbor, and um, and it was a little bit on the close uh, on the side of more on the side of Wisconsin than on Michigan, and it just stopped there. And they all hovered there for several hours, uh, looking like um, um, just looked like a swarm of uh, of of like flies. Just they were just sitting there and. Uh, hovering with a few of them moving around amongst each of the other in a, in a very large round ball of, of a swarm of, of objects. Despite all of the calls into the 911 dispatch, most of the witnesses weren't afraid by the unearthly phenomenon. Instead, many seemed fascinated. Uh, I wasn't scared. I was more intrigued by what was going on. Why are they in my backyard? You know, what's going on? And and I said, after about a half hour, it was like another blink of an eye, and they were gone. They were all gone. I didn't know if it was like a mothership, if they were all connected at, at some point, and why they were there in my backyard. I don't know. Just be, to be a witness, you know, just to say, tell my story and say, yeah. I believe that there was unidentified flying objects in my backyard. But what exactly were those unidentified flying objects? Each of the witnesses have their own thoughts on the matter, but they all seem to lean in one direction. I have no doubt in my mind that they're extraterrestrials. They've got all these different names for them now. And are they from outer space? Are they from planet Earth? Are they from the water? Uh, who knows? Who knows? If it was an alien, I hope they just get this over with and come down and talk to us or something. <laughs> I don't know. Something unexplainable, you know. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. It's a big universe out there. We don't know what's out there. We have no idea. Gary Wilkes was working at the Ottawa County Dispatch the evening the lights were spotted, and even he doesn't doubt what the witnesses saw. When I really don't know what they were seeing, however, I'm convinced they did see something with the enormous amount of phone calls we received that evening. The sightings over West Michigan in 1994 garnered national attention and even to this day is still a topic of discussion. In 2022, Netflix's Unsolved Mysteries series ran an episode dedicated to these lights in the sky. There are things out there that we don't understand. We're always looking for answers. That episode of Unsolved Mysteries even prompted a former pilot to contact Jack and relay his account of that night in 1994. There was a uh, 747 pilot that wrote me after the Unsolved Mysteries uh, uh, documentary, and he did write me and he said that the FAA did see something at his 12 o'clock, asked him to identify it. He did. It was that March 8th, 1994 night. And he wrote me and he told me it was this he's a retired pilot of a, of a cargo 747 who was landing in Chicago and he saw it. Uh, so there you go. You got a newspaper, you got a newspaper reporter that saw you got police officers that reported on the ground. You got a pilot that uh, a 747 pilot that saw it. You got the FAA that saw it on the radar. And then you got um, and then you have a meteorologist, uh, a radar meteorologist that saw it. So we, you got all of them and then plus 300 people in West Michigan that saw it too. The alien craze is now more widespread than ever after a recent congressional hearing discussing UFO sightings by military personnel. 
although the government now refers to these sightings as Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAPs. UAP are in our airspace, but they are grossly underreported. These sightings are not rare or isolated, they are routine. Military aircrew and commercial pilots, trained observers whose lives depend on accurate identification, are frequently witnessing these phenomena. Three former U.S. military personnel testified in the public hearing before Congress. Former U.S. Navy Lieutenant Ryan Graves, retired U.S. Navy Commander David Fravor, and retired U.S. Air Force Major David Grush, who had the most sensational of claims. I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program. Biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to. The allegations made by the witnesses are already being disputed by the Pentagon, but with the idea of UFOs or UAPs back at the forefront of discussion in America, our eyes turn back to the skies over West Michigan in hopes to understand what was seen on that cold March night in 1994. Could the lights in the sky and the radar signatures viewed at the National Weather Service have been an atmospheric anomaly? I, I went through a number of things on radar that uh, that I wanted to check out and make sure that, it, and, and I discussed with a lot of other people that knew radar meteorology. And uh, no, it was not uh, anomalous propagation, which is super refraction where the beam is coming back down. This definitely had the signature of what an airliner would look like. Look like. Um, it's, it's just that its movements were, were very fast and, and strange. And if not an anomaly, could it have been a military aircraft? Jack doesn't seem to think it's a possibility either. Uh, we would not test vehicles like that in Chicago airspace. There's just no way. That would be so illegal and so dangerous. I, I mean, th they should be court-martialed for any military guy to be flying the way they were in Chicago airspace like, airspace like the way I saw them fly. And they were flying at all sorts of altitudes, directions, and, and, and extreme high speeds. And the fact these lights mysteriously vanished as quickly as they were first seen also leads to more questions about the sighting. And I said after about a half hour, it was like another blink of an eye and they were gone. They were all gone. I didn't know if it was like a mothership, if they were all connected at, at some point. And why would they were there in my backyard? I don't know. Just be, to be a witness, you know, just to say, tell my story and say, yeah, I believe that there was unidentified flying objects in my backyard. Cindy looks back pretty certain that what she saw was from another world. But Jack, who never actually saw the lights for himself, just the radar signatures, is still unsure to this day what he actually witnessed that night. I just I just don't know. I, I've tried to figure it out. I've never seen anything myself in the sky. I've looked, being a meteorologist, I've looked to the skies all the time. I'm a big airplane buff. I've been on airplanes all the time. I've been on aircraft. I've always had my nose out the, uh, out the window, and I've never seen anything I couldn't explain in the skies myself. But as far as that night goes, um, it was a weird night, and I, I can't, I don't know anything else. The lights in the sky over West Michigan on March 8, 1994 might always remain a mystery, but witness Cindy Pravda hopes that telling stories like this will get more people to come forward and lead to a real explanation in the future. I hope people are more apt to come out and, and speak about it. There's a lot of people I know that they're still to this day I still get phone calls from people, you know, Cindy, can I talk to you about this? And, you know, I think I saw the same thing, but I never told anybody. And my wife or my husband thinks I'm crazy. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I just hope people open up.